Greetings and welcome to the Halloween edition of the Sliders Review. And I'm here today to talk to you about Extreme Ghostbusters Episode 1 Darkness at Noon. Extreme Ghostbusters is something I've been wanting to talk about for about two years now. Um, but I never had a chance because, you know, you know. I'm busy. <laughs> and I do plan on doing a rundown review of the entire series, but just not right now because I've only watched it once in my entirety and I need to get caught up. So around December, January or so, I'll probably talk about it. But it's a really cool update to that of the real Ghostbusters cartoon. It's the second generation. I remember this came out when I was in high school. Like I remember like I was getting ready for school one morning. I turned on the TV. It was on syndication and I saw something said it streamed ghost, but I'm like, what the heck is this crap? I didn't like the animation. Uh, I didn't like some of the character designs like Kylie. I did not like her design. I did not like the new redesign of Slimer. And it was just, I don't know, it just looked ugly to me, <laughs> so I didn't watch it. But then, I don't know what happened, about two years ago, I found it on Hulu or something like that, and I decided just to watch it. And I'm like, hey, this is pretty awesome. I actually like this one better than, like, the real Ghostbusters, and I grew up on the real Ghostbusters. I used to love that. But then, I decided to watch the real Ghostbusters um, on YouTube, and I just couldn't fall in love with it like I used to, but I really like the extreme one. Um, it does have an edge to it. It's a darker feel. Even the intro is darker, grittier, the, the song to it. And the song is sung by Jim Cummings, a voice actor. He sounds like Little Richard. It's insane. But I'll talk more about this later. So basically, it sets it up where a bunch of construction workers are down in like the sewers and it's like a cave in. So they're trying to clear out the rubble. And when they do that, boom, a ghost pops out. I think her name is Akira. She's a woman who has a woman form until she has like snake arms with a head too. And I think like three heads or something like that. She looks crazy looking, but her design is cool. And so then it cuts to that to the intro and then it goes into the next generation of the Ghostbusters. But they're not Ghostbusters yet. See, they're just college students at um, taking a class at Egon Spangler's class. He is the remaining Ghostbuster in the, se on the series. This only lasted one season, which sucks. But a lot of people didn't know about it at the time. And so you can actually watch it on Crackle. But the problem with Crackle now is it no longer lets you set up an account and a watch list. So you constantly have to like search for it and crap like that. I hate that. Also, the episodes are out of order on Crackle. I hate when apps do that. Like it's not hard to put something in the right spot. Cause they have the first episode, the one I'm talking about now. Cause see, the first episode is a two-parter. The first part is the first episode, and the second part is the 40th episode. I don't understand that, cause it's 40 episodes total. So they're like 20 minutes. So it could take you like 20 hours just to watch. You know what I'm saying? But anyway, so Egon is the last remaining Ghostbusters. The other ones have went their separate ways and everything. And in the classroom are a bunch of like 19, 20 year olds. And one is Kylie. She's the goth girl and she's obsessed with ghosts. And she's read nearly every book there is about ghosts and also Egon books that he wrote. There is Garrett. He's the dude in the wheelchair and he used to be an athlete, but he's still an athlete now uh, for um, like Special Olympic paraplegic stuff like that. He's very um, sarcastic, jokey and stuff. There's Roland, who <laughs> everybody here is famous. Like Kylie, she's voiced by Tara Strong. Um, Garrett by, uh, what's his name? Jason or James? Um, uh, he was the voice of Peter Pan in the Peter Pan and the Pirates. Um, I'm trying to think. Jason Madison. Madison. Uh, he's also Kid Flash in Young Justice. And um, let's see who else. Oh, there's Roland. He is the black, like, techno whiz, like, engineer type dude. And it's funny because 
Um, there's another character I'll get into later, and he's all like, "Hey man, you want an easy A?" And he's all like, "I don't listen to rap music." <laughs> The reason why he said that is because he's voiced by uh, Rafonzo. Um, what is Alfonso's last name? Um, Ribeiro. The dude who played Carlton in The Fresh Prince of Bel Air. <laughs> and then we have Edgardo. And he is voiced by Reno Romano. And uh, this is my buzz. This is why I always assume Reno was Hispanic because he's always voicing Hispanic characters in cartoons. He's not. <laughs> so El Guado, he's Hispanic, but he's a stereotype. He's the rude, sarcastic slacker who's always hitting on women and stuff. So not only do they get offensive with him, but he's not even voiced by a real Latino. <laughs> and Reno, of course, voiced Spider-Man and Batman in two different cartoon series. And so basically when they're there, you know, El Guado, he's like into Kylie. She's not into him. He doesn't believe in ghosts, but he thinks this class is an easy A. And then Garrett, he is fascinated because he knows... Egon is like an original Ghostbuster, but like Roland doesn't believe in ghosts, but Kylie does and stuff. And so Egon, you know, he goes there and he teaches his class and all this other stuff. And it's weird because like Egon's like, oh, this class has doubled in size of last semester. Nobody ever wants to take his class. I don't understand. If he only had two students in the last year, how does he still have a class? Because normally they would drop a class like that. Or if it has like um, not that many seats. But with four people, they should have just like dropped it and stuff. And so it's really interesting to see that he is the remaining one left. There hasn't been ghost seen in like forever. But he has some of his gadgets. And he shows them to them. And she wants to play with the... Um, ghost beacon thing he said don't touch that that will like alert other ghosts to your like position but she ends up stealing it and so like basically when i forget what happened but um what's that what's that lady's name they had a secretary i think her name is eugene i think no um uh, what's her name? She was a woman who was the secretary and she was from like the movies and the cartoon series um, Janine and so Janine like you know she um Has a huge crush on Egon and stuff And Slimer is also in this show, but they redesigned Slimer. He's ugly looking with huge teeth now I hate that but he's still like hungry, but he constantly make noises like a little baby and he's so annoying in this like show. But basically, um, what is it? I think some ghost sightings were happening because that one ghost, I think her name's Akira, like I said, she was like doing stuff to people. And then so somehow I think Slimer was watching the news and saw that or something. And then he goes to like the university. He scares like everybody there except for like Egon, of course, because he still lives in the what's it called? The um, ah, what's that uh, fire station place? Because Egon still lives there, but Egon is still doing research on like ghosts, but he hasn't used none of his equipment forever because there ain't been no ghosts. But he's always like ready for him, you know what I'm saying? And so, like, everybody gets a little scared by like Slimer and all this and that. Well, in a way, later on, the ghost is starting to attack people, and then Kylie's home, and then she uses the ghost beacon. It summons a ghost. She was kind of hoping it would summon her grandmother, who just passed away, but it, but the ghost turns into the form of her grandmother, tricks her until it turns into the real thing, and it possesses her. Egon, now knowing that there's a ghost out and about, he goes to like attack the ghost by himself. And he even says, you know, he's breaking the number one rule of being a ghostbuster. You never go alone. Well, he is no match for the ghost. The equipment is so like, you know, outdated and stuff. And so he gets attacked by the ghost. The ghost infects him with ghost pimples and everything. 
he's sick, he's tired, his class is kind of like, man, you look terrible and stuff. Now, when I say this has a darker, edgier feel, when the sarca sarcasm, boy, they are edgy. Like, El Guado, he makes fun of Jackie Chan. Um, I think he makes fun of Garrett in, like, a wheelchair. Like, they really go there with, like, the adult humor and stuff. And so, what is it? Um, they're looking for their device. The, well, he shows them also the station. I think that's also how she got the device to begin with. Cause he showed them the old, like, you know, fire station and, and all this other stuff and the old equipment. And that's when she took the device. But well, anyway, when they're back in, like, you know, school and stuff, he can't, like, teach because he's sick and all this other crap. But then he doesn't know what happened to the ghost beacon. And they find like a book near the um, station, near where the um, ghost speaking used to be. It's Kylie's book. So they realize she must have took it and stuff. So they know they have to like save her. So they, so Egon can't go. So the dudes are all like, you know, we're going to do it and everything. But um, Janine's all like, you know, they're just kids. They can't go and everything. But they're like, you know, whatever, man. Like we're like young adults, whatever. So they don't suit up and Ghostbusters suit, but they take like the old faulty equipment and the um the old car and stuff and so they go out and they look for Kylie. Kylie is now uh, possessed by the ghost and she's attacking people left and right with ghost pimples and stuff. And so the guys they find her and she's seducing El Guado and he likes it. And they're like, man, what are you doing? He's like, it's okay. Um, she's legal. <laughs> oh, I can't believe they went there. But then she turns into like the ghost thing and she tries to attack him. So they're all like, well, what the heck do we do if we shoot her with the um, proton packs? Well, by the way, Hasbro has made a life-size proton pack that lights up and everything. I can't wait till it's on sale. Anyway, so they're like, well, if we shoot her, the body, will, will it kill both the ghost and Kylie? So they don't want to shoot. So they're hesitating. El Guado don't care. He shoots. <laughs> and stuff like that. And the ghost escapes. When Kylie comes to, she's pissed that El Guado shot her. And so he's all like, you know, when you was possessed by that ghost and you was like seducing me, like, what did you mean by that? And she's just like playing off like she don't know. Because it's like a love-hate thing between them throughout the entire series. So when they go back to Egon and everything, he's still sick with the pimples. And they're all like, you know, that ghost is out and about. And they do some research on her and she's supposed to bring the end of the world and stuff like that. Because she's so powerful. So they know they have to stop her. So they all like, look, man, you need a team. That's us. But Janine's all like, y'all are too young to be doing this. But Egon's all like, you know, somebody has to do it. So, but they can't do it with the weapons they have. And Egon tells them, you know, they're all outdated. And they're all like, well, let's just make some new ones. And he's all like, can't, like, it's impossible. But then, you know, Roland said, you know, he'll help them. So then they modify the old equipment and make it brand new looking. But, but by brand new, it looks older than like the, the, the old versions. But they all have like new gear and they all start to suit up. And so Garrett and Roland, they suit up in traditional Ghostbuster um, jumpsuits. Kylie, she's wearing like a spandex outfit and basically sports like padding. I don't know why. <laughs> it looks like she's wearing hockey pads or something. And Aguado, he just changes into like it's weird. His outfit is just like a shirt and a vest and pants. I don't know why they gave that to him. But um, yeah, so they go all out and they're trying to get like Akira or whatever her name is. And but she's so powerful and stuff. And then it turns out that she has the ability to make like babies. But guess where her babies are? Her babies are the pus that's living inside the, the ghost pimples. So then she calls um, four of her babies. And you see tons of ghost babies coming out of people's pimples. It's gross. <laughs> and, stuff. and so her babies are flying around, flying around the Ghostbusters. So they're like blasting and zapping as much as they can. But they realize that they're going to um, 
stop all these babies. They have thousands of babies. They have to stop the mother. So they start blasting the mother and they all blast her at once. And so she is subdued and they put her in the ghost catcher. And Egon shows them how to use like, you know, the portal that um puts them in there. It's so funny how Danny Phantom has copied everything <laughs> from Ghostbusters. And so they're all like, okay, I guess we're done and everything. And they're like, no, like, what if there are more ghosts? Like, we need to be like a team and stuff. And so then they decide they are going to form the new 2.0 version. And then we see down in, like, you know, the sewer where that caveman was at, more ghosts come out. So, of course, the team is needed. It sucks that this lasted only for, like, one season because it was really good but a lot of people didn't know of it and also the older people that watched it they just preferred the real ghostbusters that was more corny and campy and goofy and silly and stuff now the original team will show back up in the finale back in the saddle and it's funny because they're still trying to act like the way they did in the 80s all goofy and silly but it won't work in like the 20th century. <laughs> and it's funny because the dude who voices Egon is the same one from the real Ghostbusters. The one who played the brain and Pinky in the brain. And when the other guys come back, they're still voiced by the same people from back in the day. So that's really cool. They brought them back for that. I still say in the live action, this should be like a live action movie. That's what they should have made this into instead of the all female one. Or I haven't seen the other one yet. I'm a little afraid. Like after the all female one, I'm just like, I don't know, man. <laughs> that wasn't that spooky. All right. Well, I shall talk to y'all later. Bye. Ha 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 ha.